When a person is diagnosed with HIV, it can become their identity. I found out it doesn't have to be that way. Well, I grew up in an incredible Christian home. My parents loved Jesus, and I understood about Jesus, but I didn't let the relationship grow. And so the compromise began to settle in. I began to dabble into everything that was available. You know, uh, alcohol became available, sexual immorality became available. And so basically, once I was in college, it was about making sure I was a part of the party. But it was during college that I was discovered by my agency in New York, Ford Models, a big agency in, the, in New York City, and they said, hey, when you graduate, come up to New York. So I get up to New York and go into the head of the men's division at Ford up in New York, and he says, listen, for you to be really successful, make a lot of money in New York, you really need to go to Europe. So I'm off to Paris. I've never been out of the country before. I've got my first passport in hand. My parents take me to JFK. I'll never forget, I'm standing there at JFK. My mom looks at me and she goes, I feel like I'm sending you to the den of wolves. When I got to Paris, it was, man, the, the opportunities for models, the, the parties, the privileges, everything that went along with it. It was amazing how many doors would open for you and places you could go. And now it was like, wow, college was one level of compromise. This was a whole nother level of compromise. So now it's been about two and a half years. I've gotten all the good pictures that I need. And now I'm heading back from Paris back to New York City because my agent, I saw him in Paris, and he said, hey, you're ready, man. Come back to New York and start working out in New York. You know, you got money in your bank, you got travel going on, you got a club that you're an investor in, you know, you got girls around. It's like, oh yeah, you're living it, bro. And then I get a phone call. I will never forget that. And I get this call from a buddy of mine. He said, hey, man, you remember that girl you dated for like six months in New York, you know? And yeah, 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 yeah. What, 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 what? Well, she died last night. And she died of AIDS. And at that moment, I got that phone call. It was like, oh, wow. This is what's going to go wrong. This is it. And I began to contemplate what was the next step. And I got those results when I walked in, I sat down and she handed me a piece of paper and she put her hand on my shoulder and I'm looking at this piece of paper and I'm like, what's going on? This says for those who've tested HIV positive. And everything I thought that was really important, all the money and the fame and the, the bar and the girls and the parties, man, you know what? That doesn't matter one iota at that moment in your life. Because at that moment, all you're thinking of, I'm gonna die. That's it. And what's going to happen when I die? At that point, man, I, uh, I began to really soul search. What am I doing with my life? I'll never forget on a Sunday morning, I put on the TV and there was this church show on television. And I thought, man, I got to go to church somewhere. I got I to gotta get back to God. And I know that's kind of like a cop out for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, you face devastation. Now you get back to God. But you know, the bottom line is, I felt like I was going to meet him pretty quickly. And I called up an old buddy of mine. I said, hey, you're going to church? And he was kind of shocked to hear from me and said, yeah, well, you can ride with us. He takes me up to church. And it was that day that I really experienced what it was like to have a relationship with Jesus Christ because I saw people who really loved God. It was as if God removed the judgment from my eyes and said, you see, they love me and they have a relationship with me. You never did. And this was the point where he brought me to. And it was that day, February 9th of 1992. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was as if there was a weight that was lifted off my shoulders. I, I, it's unexplainable, to be honest with you. But I really felt like at that moment, it was like, wow, you know what? Everything's going to be cool. As a Christian, I had a passion for wanting to try to set up Bible studies and wherever it might be. And people are going, oh, I know somebody like you. And they name people's names. And the only name I could remember is some girl named Ashley. And sure enough, she had just got done praying that God and would bring somebody into her life to help her set up Bible studies. Somebody Bible studies. into Munich, into the city, to help me with the Bible studies. On that first night when we met, he told me the whole story about how he had contracted the virus. And he looked at me and he said, and now I'm going to go and I'm going to make a videotape. I was actually going to invite all my model friends and all the agents and everybody and they were going to come to my funeral and then they were going to watch my testimony on the video screen and everybody was going to get saved. And it was like, Ash looked at me and she goes, you know, you could be healed of that or you may already be healed of that, but uh, you know, your life's your testimony, Greg, not your death. And God really challenged me of, you know, what are you doing with your life? We ended up moving back to New York, got married, uh, 
enjoying the business, living in New York, traveling the world, and then just really felt compelled that God wanted us to be down in Florida, not really knowing what God had in store for us at that time, not knowing the involvement He would have for us at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And I started part-time, and then eventually, as God began to kind of grow me up, it went from part-time to full-time to, now it's a campus pastor at Hollywood. Calvary Chapel Hollywood, you know? So it's, it's like, wow, God, you brought us here for a real purpose and a real reason. I'd say it all sums up with one word, hope. You know, I went from despair to hope. I honestly didn't think I would be living today. And I still have hope for a long life. I really do. Wow, there's, there really is nothing impossible with God. Yeah, I really believe that. There's nothing impossible with God.